Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to generate wind loads for enclosed building structures in RAM elements according to the ASCE 7 main wind force resisting system. In this particular video, we will review our finished model in RAM elements, assuming that all of the wind load definitions and wind load cases are complete. Now for this sample structure that we utilized through this series of videos, we generated wind loads in both the positive and negative X and Z directions. The X and Z directions are your two horizontal directions in RAM elements. We created additional load cases so we could consider both the positive and negative internal pressures, and we also considered both case A and case B at the roof system. As a reminder, it is helpful to have a good familiarity with the code requirements to ensure that all load cases and scenarios are accomplished through your finished model. We will now turn our attention to our completed model in RAM elements to review the rest of the information that has been provided. First, let's go ahead and take a look at our load cases. As you can see, we have generated eight load cases in the X direction and eight load cases in the Z direction. Again, considering both positive and negative direction, considering both positive and negative internal forces, and considering both case A and case B. For this particular structure, that did require multiple wind load definitions to account for each of those scenarios. To review the complete list of load definitions, we can go to the Home tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the wind definition icon. As you can see, these are all the wind load cases, and the majority of the parameters may be very similar between different load cases, but certain pieces of information such as your internal pressure coefficients or also your load case may be slightly different. As you can see, from this pull down menu here, you can browse to the location where these files are stored and you can go ahead and forward these files and save them if needed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the load definitions as they were assigned. To do that, we can click on the areas tab in the data panel and then click on the wind load definition icon. Through this area, we will be able to see which load definition was assigned to which area. This would be a great place to go if you wanted to just double check to make sure that all your load areas did receive the correct wind load definition, considering the case that you are taking a look at. Now, each load area can only be assigned one wind load definition per each load case. If anything within your wind load definition changes, there are a few things that you can do. First of all, if you needed to remove a wind load pressure, we do have a delete wind pressure icon available here. This does follow standard RAM elements rules for select and apply, so you're going to select the wind load area that you want to delete and then utilize that icon. In addition to that, if any parameter within a wind definition changes, you would be required to reassign that wind definition. So say, for example, in this particular definition, my basic wind speed changed. I would want to come back and follow the same procedure and just reassign it to make sure that those changes are picked up in the final member loads that I'm looking to have in both my analysis and design. In addition to that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our negative pressures since we walked through the positive ones in the previous load in the previous videos. Now, as you can see, my load pressures are acting in the negative X direction. And what you might have also noticed is that I was actually able to utilize the same wind definitions in the positive X as the negative X. So how does RAM elements know which direction to apply that wind load to? Well, if you recall, when we created each wind definition, we did specify an internal point coordinate, which basically for your structure should coordinate to any point within your building envelope. This basically defines the vector for your load. When you have a windward wall, for example, 
the windward wall load will always point towards the direction of that internal point coordinate. So for that reason, since the rest of my parameters were the same, I was able to reduce the total number of wind definitions I needed to account for both the positive and negative x directions. Now the last thing we're going to take a look at is our wind load report. So after you assign a wind definition to your model, you may wish to view a report which is available within RAM elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the spreadsheet tab in the ribbon toolbar. Click on all elements icon. The way all RAM elements reports work is it will report on whatever is selected at the time that the report is accessed. So we want to select all of our load areas. Okay. Next we're going to go to the output tab in the ribbon toolbar and select the data icon and then we're going to come down to the loads area. Okay. Here we're going to tell the program that we want to um, access the wind loads. This is specific for the workflow for using wind definitions. And then we can select whichever case we wanted to look at. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these negative directions. I'm going to go with load case 5 in the x direction. When I'm finished, I can go ahead and click on the OK button. And then the report will provide which definitions were used along with your design pressures. So here are all my wind definitions in that particular direction with a repeat of all my parameters that I specified within that definition. Let's go ahead and scroll on down a little further and we'll be able to see the design pressures for each area. So here we can see that here was the leeward walls, here are the design wind pressures that were assigned to them and so forth. So we have the roof system, we have the side walls, and we also have the windward wall. Now a lot of this information is available to you if you click on the view reports button when you assign the wind definition, but you may also wish to choose this to access this type of report later in your workflow. So that is available here. Now at this point, this concludes our process for generating wind loads for an enclosed building structure in RAM elements. As a reminder, our enclosed building structure had a gable roof system, which was included with how we applied the wind loads to our particular structure. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.